this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for which it stands, one Savior crucified. Risen and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. With allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. And we've got a birthday. They disagree over some of the smallest things. It's too hot for some, too cold for others. I should have just kept my mouth shut. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about Christmas. I'm excited about uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, I wore this tie once in a revival, and the guy told me it was out of season. And uh, I think the birth of Jesus is always in season. I mean, I know it's so. But I wanted to make sure I wore it this season anyway. Uh, and I just love the fellowship. And, and when I came in, you know how early I am, but I did beat Linda. Uh, I didn't see very many here, and I'm thinking, my goodness, what, what's happened? Look, because I'm always late, that don't mean everybody else has <laughs> Sue, so I thought of this this morning. Every time Ed and I go somewhere, he gets dressed, 
gets out in the car and waits on me, and here I'm making the bed, washing the dishes, doing all that, trying to get ready to go, and here Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Little Pretty Boy sitting out in the car. Waiting <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll see if we sing to their anniversary. <laughs> hey, that's one for <laughs> Well, I'm not going to change the subject much, but since you had a story to tell, I've got one. We had a big Christmas dinner yesterday up in another church, a lot of family. Well, I had to run an errand. So that put me about 10 minutes after it started. And somebody gets there early. <laughs> so then when I come in, I'm the guy that's always late. <laughs> She's here when you're not with her. Does that make sense? <laughs> One time out of how many, though? <laughs> Let me tell you about marriage. Adam always blames Eve, and Eve always blames Adam. That's just the way it goes. That's the way it started. Bless our offering. Let's have a good day today. Amen. Think of a lot of experiences we've been through in the past year since last Christmas. Not going to preach on all that, but I I, I am so thankful that we still have family coming, uh, that we've met along the way. Always glad to see you. Well, all of you, but you're all special. I'm going to go back in a little bit of what we said Wednesday night, and I'm going to go through that kind of quick. I don't mean to leave anything out, but it was also uh, leads up to what I said to church and Christmas. And if I go all the way back to Jeremiah, when I go back to Jeremiah, it brings me up to Daniel. But in Jeremiah chapter 32, and, and I'm bringing this together so we just realize how much God, or maybe reminds us of how much God looks ahead in prophecy. How much he says it's going to happen, and it's going to happen. That's why Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. But God told Jeremiah, when the word of the Lord came to him, he, he told him about uh, the invasion of, of Nebuchadnezzar, which was going to be 50, 60 years later, God had told Jeremiah about Nebuchadnezzar coming over and besieging Jerusalem and how they were going to be taken captive. And then when we get over into Daniel, who was one of these, and the story of Daniel, there's so much that's prophesied and talked about not only the wars and the rumors of wars and the invasions of, of uh, the Medes and the Persians and all this thing in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he allowed Daniel to interpret the dreams. And all these things that were going to happen in the years to come came right up as God said it would be. I'm trying to bring this point out to let you know that this birth of Jesus Christ was well, not just something that happened. That was past. But that God had prophesied a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back on track. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure the way Butch carried it, it was the lie. <laughs> nah, well, where am I now? <laughs> to see Butch carry a baby, I mean, what do you expect from a guy? <laughs> Daniel chapter 2. Let's go backwards a few books. In Daniel chapter 2. And I, and I ain't going to get right up to the birth of Jesus Christ. 
In Daniel chapter 2, I mentioned in Jeremiah how that God had spoke to him and told him that Nebuchadnezzar would come and besiege them, and they would take the Chaldeans. The word Chaldeans kind of stood out to me because when Nebuchadnezzar has a dream here according to Daniel, one page over from Ezekiel, in chapter 2 of verse 1, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, he dreams dreams, within his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke in him. He couldn't sleep. He's got this dream that keeps troubling him. Now, if somebody will read verse 2 for me. Now, he's called every high professor, professional that he's got. And you notice Chaldeans is capitalized. And if you recall Chaldeans, these are special people. They're supposed to be teaching other people the ways that come from Jerusalem. And it also means the nationality. This is where Daniel gets involved. So they say, tell me your dream and we'll interpret it. Man, that's an easy answer, ain't it? Tell me your dream, and I can make up anything. You see, they got a woman on TV now. She talks to those people that's crossed over. I'm glad they all crossed over up here. Right. <laughs> Anybody she talks to, it don't matter where they come from, when she relates to, tell them, oh, you're okay. They said they understand. Now think of that. She gets paid for that. You want to be scammed? Believe in it. And they say, oh God, I'm so glad that worried me so long. I'm glad to know he's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now think about it. The people have gotten away from what God said Prophecy, birth, judgment, eternal life, eternal damnation. It's all in there. There's nothing in there about somebody crossing over to the other side, and I can talk. Now, listen. My mom's spirit, what I know about her, is with me. Now, here's what I'm telling you. It ain't out here flying around. But if I do not... Help that old person that I see in need. I feel her pulling my ear. Now, you may think I'm making that up, but I'm telling you. Now, my mom flat would teach you some manners and slap you in a heartbeat. <laughs> so, I still, and I, I may be messing up every now and then, but that's something that's missing in this day and time. It's just respect. <laughs> just, just respect to one another. The effort of helping someone. So what I'm saying in here is people can make up anything. And that's part of the part of confusion is what people want to make up, how you ought to believe. And I, I enjoyed the story that uh, Dreamer told and the others, that's very important how that people have neglected. This is the truth. This is it. You won't find the lie in it. You may not understand it all, but God is telling us if you read it and the more you get in it, the more you'll find there's fights in it. It's a, it's a, this is your life. You're in here. Saved, sinner, rebellious, converted, uh, praying, not praying, believing, not believing. You're in here. We're all in here. Everybody's in this book. <coughs> now, in this chapter, chapter 2, what he's saying is, is look, there's something going to happen to you in the future, Nebuchadnezzar. God's showing you the future. Remember the head of gold? How he was the big king over it all and he took us a little bit of pride and he Stepped up because he was the big I am, he thought. Somebody read verse 28 for me. So there is a 
God in heaven that revealed the seed and makes known to the king and to the eagle. What shall be the latter day? Thy dreams and thy visions of thy head before thy bed are due. Now, notice what he's saying. This is a big uh, word or a couple words when you read even in the New Testament. Latter days, right? Now read the next verse. And when fear came, thy thoughts came into my, thy mind before my bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And it revealed secrets, make it known to thee what shall come to pass. So now he's telling him the hereafter, right? That's prophecy. That's Bible. We're going to find it in this book right here. Now, so Nebuchadnezzar, he ends up, and we, we read about in Daniel, the Medes and the Persians, the Romans, the Roman Empire, one king dies, another king comes up, and in there's the little horn, and in there's the Antichrist that's coming. That's, that's what he's saying. In the latter days, though, Nebuchadnezzar, while you're here, there's going to be kings come in, kings go out. You're going to lose your kingship. Your grandson, he ends up reading the writing on the wall. Remember the Belteshazzar? And he was having this big party, and he brought in the golden vessels, and they were worshiping the golden vessels and all the things made by hand. And then all of a sudden, he sees this writing on the wall. That's Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. He wants somebody to interpret it. You know where he goes? He goes and gets Daniel. He said, what that means is your kingdom's going to end. This inheritance you got is going to end. Everything that we own in this material life, God has provided for us to use it and to use it the best way. But look, there ain't going to be no U-Haul behind your hearts. It ain't going to happen. Or at least I don't think so. Well, I should say I know so. So in Daniel, let's go to chapter 9, because I am, I, I tell you, I'm excited. I hope to get to the church here in the birth and all about Christmas. But look, we're right in here in the prophecy of what he's saying. Jesus is still alive. If he wasn't, there wouldn't be a church house. If Jesus hadn't resurrected from the dead, we wouldn't be assembled together. It'd be gone. Heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my word will never pass away. It's going to stay. It's in here. People don't believe it. I, I get so, I, I, I kind of control myself when I hear all these things of what people tell other people they ought to do. People need to believe in Jesus. If they, they'll just look it up a little bit and try to get involved. But anyway, I, in chapter 9 of Daniel, read verse 24, and we'll keep on going. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy. Now notice, seal the prophecy. Notice what he's saying here. Now 70 weeks by historical events that people, now I don't have this in a Bible verse, but I have searched it out, I believe it's right. 70 weeks, weeks mean years, 490 years. Well, I did a little adding and subtracting in my own references of Daniel. And I took the 490 years up to where Jesus was born, and I was only 39 years shy. But I got to reading also when he was about 30 years old, or about the time this was written. So I'm close. Probably don't bother anybody else, but I like to prove what it says in my own mind. I like to find it. I might spend a couple hours, but I ain't telling you about myself. I'm going to tell you what I'm trying to tell you is this is true. This is true, the prediction of the rise and the fall of Daniel. And it's also telling you that these books, in the next verse, he talks about the Messiah. <clears throat> the Messiah, the Savior. 
the Messiah, the man, the very one that we're here today because the Messiah has come. It wasn't Daniel, and it wasn't David, and it wasn't Adam. It's Jesus. We're here because of the rest, but we didn't inherit the bloodline of the Jews. We inherit the bloodline of Jesus Christ. He's the one. He's the one. Now, in Daniel chapter 12, that's where I think I about closed down on uh, Wednesday. We had two ladies here that's come a couple times. I, I have no idea who they're kin to, who, who invited them. Bless their hearts. We've had a couple couples come in. And uh, you know how I get things messed up. When they went out this time, I said, well, what's your name? And the first one said, it's Bonnie. And the other one said, I said, what's your name? She said, Mary. I said, well, thank God it wasn't Bonnie and Clyde. I just... <laughs> 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 but they laughed along with me. So, I, said, I said, well, it's not boring here, you know. <laughs> but I think... People, there's people out there really searching for the truth. There's people out there who want to know, thus saith the Lord. People have been scammed, lied to, mistrust in a world today, phone calls like crazy, who is that? Even, even the high profile people that you want to give to, you see on television, you have to doubt, are they really going to get it? You know? So we see this in a corrupt world today. So Daniel says, when the Messiah comes, there's going to be a people that's going to be honest, going to live righteous as they can. They may be deceived, but be not deceived. As others come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or I am of Christ, be not deceived. Uh, the world is out to deceive the very elect. If you don't believe it, ask why they tried to take Christ out of Christmas. Christ is, that's a big thing to me. Christ is in Christmas. <laughs> the prayer in the gatherings is as important as the food we eat. So here in Daniel chapter 12, as predicted all the way back into Jeremiah, as always up to Daniel, I'd like for you to read verse 1. And at this time, John Michael saying that the great prince which standeth for the children of the other people, and there shall be time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Everyone that, did you end the page or the verse? Stick with me, Chuck. One <laughs> shall be found written in the book. Thank you. So now we've got the book, right? Now remember, because I will get into this. He told Daniel back here, close the book. Seal it up until the time comes, right? I've told you everything you need to know. Now, he's telling Daniel here, there's a book. It's called the Book of Life. I'll just tell you what it is. And it's written. Some's names are in it, and some will be blotted out. Even though people don't believe they can backslide, some names will be blotted out. If you go back into the Old Testament, Moses' time, and there's another thing. Look, if this is so good, and God is so great. And people are so happy with him. Why do they still believe they're okay when they backslide? They want to have their cake and eat it too. Or live on both sides of the world. Look, this is the way to salvation. Eternal life. This is what Daniel was saying. 
If you find the world to be more important and more blessing than eternal life or the happiness of fellowship, you leave a nightclub, you got to worry about somebody knocking your head for five dollars. Think about it. The church shouldn't need to act like that. And the church doesn't need to worry about somebody begging them for five dollars. I'm getting right down to it. If you need it, Jesus said to ask, right? If I need it, where am I going to go? To somebody else? To your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Nancy. She just, Brad, just shake your head and ask it, Nancy. Read the next verse in Daniel 12. Who have been to speak to the dust of the earth till away, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. I'm going to give you an idea about some. Did any of you see on the news where this volcano erupted out in uh, Australia? It sent, it sent, uh, <coughs> the eruption sent stuff two miles up in the air. The, the earth, the center of the earth is proven to be very hot. <coughs> and people believe, be careful, I'm not telling you there ain't no hot. I'll, I'll be, you know, kids. I believe God's preserved a place hotter than hell. Now I'm going to tell you, if you see this come up out of the earth, how do people still believe you're burning and burning and burning? There's got to be a judgment day. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm not asking to agree or disagree. That's not what I'm saying. There has to be a judgment day, and he's telling you about it right here. Some will be judged for everlasting life, and some for contempt. Have you heard of being held in contempt of court? I've never heard. <laughs> That's where you've been guilty. For being lying or deceiving, some are held in contempt. Now, God has got this plan all the way up through here because he's going to bring the Messiah in. That's Jesus. Those who are righteous will be righteous still, and those who are unrighteous in the judgment will be unrighteous. It's all about what you believe. I don't, you don't, you know, I'm not evaluating you or you me. I'm better than that one, or you're better than me. Look, it all comes to you. It comes to the individual. My daughter, she got a little <coughs> upset at the wife. I, I can tell this. <laughs> she, she does love me. And so I rode with my daughter down the other day a few minutes. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. In case you don't know it, she's got a higher power than you've got. Because she goes to church every time. She prays. And I just want you to know, however we think this is a negative or a positive, how it works out, it worked out this way she won. I said, that's the higher power that you don't see. But I guarantee you it's there. You get a praying mother. You get a praying father. You get a praying neighbor. And you ain't praying. You got the, you got the stronghold. That's what I try to say about God, about Jesus Christ. You get that family that prays together, they stay together. When they pray, the old saying is, and I said this, look, this is how it happens. God sees this future. And many in the dust shall rise. But it had to, look, when Jesus was born, he's fulfilling a plan. He had to be born in the flesh. But he had to be born of God. He is the Son of God. Now read the next verse. <coughs> and they, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many of the righteous as the stars forever and ever. Okay. So now he's telling the here after. Hereafter, latter days, hereafter. People will
will turn to righteousness. People will shine as the stars of heaven. Here's the next verse, and I'm going to move on over and get into the new text. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the word and seal the book, even to the end, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and the knowledge shall be increased. Travel. That's what he's saying. Many people will travel. Many people have places to go, don't we, though? Always. We, we keep moving faster and never gaining ground. Remember the old ringer washer? Now we got automatic. Remember hung them on the line? Put them in the dryer. Remember the buck board? Remember that? Well, the old buggy, buck board, road horses. Now the cars has got so many horsepower. And we still never get done. Now you see an airplane, it's in better shape than the World War and Wilbur Wright's was. So the process of time, people are going to and fro. This is, this is, he sees this out here. But I said to, to my daughter, uh, she was telling me, I, I work, do this, do that. And I said, let me tell you, you'll never get done. It's always there. <laughs> I got to bring this up, Dave. We was talking something about weapons and delivery and all that stuff. I said, well, Dave, I, he said, I get some pretty dangerous territories or something. I said, we ought to carry a gun. You know what he said? That's all a male carrier needs. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe a weapon delivering the mail. I said, yeah, that might not work out, you know. <laughs> I see now. <laughs> Times has changed, don't you? So let's sum it up. When we get into the message, let's sum it up. Because I'm going to tell you, the books are open. The seals have been unsealed in Revelation. The so-called secrets of the books of the Daniel, he said, you, you close the book and you seal it up until the time comes. Well, I'll tell you, when Jesus was born, the time has come. And if you read it, you'll see that when the wise men came to Herod seeking Jesus, Herod said, where will the child be born? And the, Her and the wise men said, it is written. That's the book. It is written that he'll be born in Bethlehem of Judea. They opened the book. And there's a lot more to go along with it. You get over into Revelation. When Jesus was baptized, oh man, it gets good. It gets better. The books are open. And right here is your book of life. And you're in it. There's life and death right there. There's saving grace. There's judgment. There's lake of fire. And yes, I believe that it's coming. Even the elements of the heavens are going to melt. It's fervent heat. God, well, God, God. 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 